It's it's a very special occasion uh, for a couple of reasons. It's a very special occasion because it's such a, a remarkable book that we're here to celebrate the launch of. Uh, and it's a very special occasion for us because uh, 45 years ago uh, was when Sean Keating came to Galway first. Well, he came to our gallery first. And we had a wonderful relationship, a working relationship with this man until the day he died. So. I have to say there's a wonderful welcome for this extraordinary book in, in this gallery and in this family, I have to say. And we've asked to come this evening to open this show, a special guest, Gary Hines, who is very special guest, really. She is, uh, <coughs> well, I, what can I say about Gary? <coughs> that hasn't been said already. She's just a remarkable lady <coughs> and one of the great ambassadors that we have in this country. Very, very special talent. And because of the long association that she has had with John Millington Singh and his work, and equally because of the association that John Keating had with Singh, we thought we'd ask Gary to come along. So would you please welcome Gary. Well, I, I like that kind of slip of the tone there, that, you know, uh, Sean Keating coming to Galway. Uh, coming to Kenny's, the Galway, <laughs> to Kenny's are synonymous. I tell you, you got it wrong. Druid and Galway. <laughs> <laughs> I actually thought she'd leave that line to the end of this. <laughs> um, Tom, I'm delighted to be here, and uh, I'm delighted to see so many friends here. I'm particularly delighted to. Uh, I didn't see the book when Tom asked me to uh, uh, to launch it. And when I got the book uh, the other day, I thought, my God, this is so beautiful. Um, I just, I don't know why, I never expected anything quite so gorgeous, um, beautiful. There is, it's, uh, it's such a collection, it's such a 10 years work, I think, is it, Amor? Um, of a painter whom I love. I fell in love with his paintings from the very first moment I saw them. And it would only have been gradually that I'd become aware of, if you like, the sort of connections in the sense of uh, Aaron, and the Aran Islanders, and in a, in a sense that Aran uh, helped his art flourish, I think, uh, as it did John Millington Sings, and it is, has a very uh, um, major place in Druid's history and Druid's, uh, Druid's making of theatre as well. I think that's one of the, probably one of the reasons why I love his paintings, is because to me, they're, they're, they're scenes. I would love to, if, any of his characters would jump up off the page and walk onto the stage. They seem so alive, so extraordinarily vivid. They look both at the same time like people you know or people you feel you've met, and yet at the same time they have that intensity of life about them that only an artist can capture or indeed an actor on a stage. They're ourselves writ larger. I also uh, love the way that, that Keating was a public artist. Um, I think it is fantastic that um, he was commissioned by the ESB to do those famous, extraordinary paintings, which I never tired of looking at, of the uh, Arden of Crusher and the Shannon Skeen. Um, and uh, he, I think he had a sense of the fact that he wanted to be part of, and that being an artist was part of making a nation. And it is that both fidelity to his own creative imagination and yet a feeling that as an artist he was part of a public community and that needed to be given expression to. That's essentially, I think, what the role of the artist is, what the role of the actor, what the role uh, of the theatre is. And sometimes, and particularly in hard times, uh, <coughs> we forget about that. Despite the fact we were a nation that in a sense was founded by both, we forget that or we, we, we pay lip service to it. Um, and we don't actually, you have a situation where um, a couple of years ago when things began to really bite, where it was said with no apology that art was a luxury we could afford when we had money and not something we could afford when we didn't. And that, that as if that were just a truism that everybody believed. I don't believe they do believe it, but um, it's people like Sean Keating, I think, who give the lie to that kind of a sort of bleak attitude. Um, I, I'm not going to delay you any longer because to be absolutely honest with you, I want to get back to Dublin 
Not because I just want to get back to the home, but I want to get back to this book, which I am going to open a bottle of wine over later tonight and just dive into. Uh, Imer, I think it's a tremendous task. I know you've been very close to the work and all the, the, uh, uh, the archive of his work and everything. I think you have uh, been responsible for uh, reminding us um, of Sean Keating and what a great artist he was. This book will no doubt do that even more. Um, so congratulations. Um, I'd like to leave you with uh, a quote, which I will tell you I heard when Emer was being interviewed uh, on the Pat Kenny show. It is so, I don't know, poignant is not the word, uh, but he said, I have a picture in my mind of an Ireland self-supporting, self-confident, and self-respecting. An Ireland with an economic equilibrium that could be trusted to stay put. I look forward to a sort of life dominated by artists and engineers. Of the two sorts, I think the artist is more valuable to the nation. If you want an anti-toxin for humbug, you will get it from the artist. <laughs> Eva O'Connor is the lady who has reintroduced us to Keating and uh, just, I was just thinking as Gary was speaking how we've come a very long way because in 1968 when we opened his first exhibition in our gallery in Salt Hill, uh, it was a very special occasion. It was more than just an exhibition opening. There was no other gallery in the west of Ireland at the time so a lot of people came who wouldn't normally go to an art exhibition. And it was during race week at 12 noon, so that people could go to the races. And it was a very hot day. And two neighbours, two female neighbours arrived with fur coats on <laughs> and hats that were out to about here. And they got their catalogues and they got their glasses of sherry. And they began to speak why this, this was obviously the way people at art exhibitions were supposed to speak. <laughs> and one of them called me over. And she said, Mr. Kenny, Jesus, Mr. Kenny, I mean, I was a little whippersnapper. What medium did the artist use here? And I didn't know. So I called Sean over and he said, well, it was fairly cheap watercolor, well watered down. And if you notice, I did it on a brown paper shopping bag because I had nothing else at the time. <laughs> it was absolutely memorable and it taught me a great lesson. And I'm just looking at you and thinking, well, haven't we come a long way? <laughs> anyway, would you please welcome Eamon O'Connor. <laughs> All praise to Gary, we all love Gary. There's only a few things I want to say, but I was just thinking about something Gary said about the connection between uh, Keating and John Millington Singh, and it's closer than you might think, because he self-located into the ten illustrations that he did in 1926 for the Playboy of the Western World as the father who gets it on the head and turns up, you know, he turns up in several of the illustrations as the father. And in fact, many of the illustrations feature the house that he was living in in the Dublin Mountains at the time, so I find that very interesting, this idea of Keating actually being in the illustrations. And the other thing that he did, which I think is interesting, is that he made sure to portray things that are never shown on stage. They're part of yes. the text. It's as if he was trying to expand the story. Yes. He was identifying that much, so I think that's really interesting. The other thing I want to talk about briefly is the Kenny Gallery and Sean Keating. Uh, in 1968, Dares Kenny, this is in his diaries, and it's all in the book, Dares Kenny drove up the driveway to Sean Keating's house and Sean was sitting in his studio, which is a little side room off the side of the house, and uh, wasn't expecting this car, and out hops Des, who apparently was, I never met him, but apparently was, you know, full of life and full of vigour and just full of it. And he said to Sean, uh, you know, I'm going to open this gallery and, uh, and I want your work for it. And Sean, and this is a quote directly, he said, but I am dead to the Irish art world, which is an extraordinary thing to say. And by that time, he was actually right, which is sad. Uh, he was known for his Shannon scheme work and he was known for his political paintings done between 1916 and 1924. But everything else that he had ever done, his contribution to Irish culture, his contribution to making sure that the School of Art survived and was turned into a university, it's now NCAD, all of that had been forgotten. So there's this ostensibly little old man just sitting there 
Well, they got on like a house on fire, and the story is that Des left the driveway that day with his boot, the back seat, and the roof piled high with paintings and drove back to Galway. And that was the start of a whole new chapter in Keating's life. And this is 1968. He was dead in 1977, nine years later. In those nine years, there was three exhibitions here, and the Kenny Gallery stocked his work all the time. As a result of the exhibitions, uh, Gay Byrne came down and opened one in 1973. As a result of that, Keating, well, he did the Rosk interview, several of you probably remember that. It was quite a funny interview where he talks about something looking like a toilet seat. Do you remember that? It was great. Nothing like an opinion. And then he was on the Gay Byrne show, uh, a birthday tribute in 1973. And I know from reading his diaries that because of that, because of the engagement here, he wasn't lost to Irish art anymore. He had a whole new audience, a whole new set of people who wanted portraits, who wanted pictures of the Aran Islands, and he was ever grateful for that. So this is the right place, you're absolutely correct, to launch the book. I'm very grateful to you. Thanks very much. I know he was. If he was here, he'd be delighted. He is here. He is here. He is here. He's, and he's, you know what? I think he's here in spirit. And I think that's important. So that's what I have to say. I hope you enjoy the book. Please read it. It's a beautiful thing to look at. I'm a visual artist myself. I work very closely with the designer to make it something beautiful for you to have. But the best honour you could do me and Keating is read it too. And I hope you really enjoy it. Thanks. Thank you. Ten years work into those pages, and I have to tell you, the illustrations are absolutely stunning, but so equally is the text. It's a very special book, and it's a real pleasure to have the launch. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your attention. And we can we have more water or wine, uh, as the case may be. Uh, and of course, if tonight, if you would like, Emer will sign books. That's what she's here to Absolutely. do. We're here to sell them and she's here to sign them. Absolutely. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done.